A lot of people think, well, netherite bar PvP takes no skill, it's just critting. Whenever you hear someone say that, it means they are just bad at this game mode. Netherite pod actually contains so much stuff to keep track of you don't even understand. This is why I created a guide that contains almost everything you need to know about Minecraft Netherite pod PvP. Doesn't matter if you are bad or really good. After watching this video, you will definitely learn something new about this game mode and get a lot better at it. Also, I would really like to thank my homie Thenisian for helping me edit this video. Also, subscribe because this video did take me a really long time to make. Anyways, before we get started with the actual tutorial, there are some prerequisites you have to meet in order to play well in general. First, you at least must have some decent frames per second. For example, if you're a high tier 3 player that has 20 frames, fighting a tier 4 player that has 40 frames, you ain't gonna win. It plays a huge factor in predicting other players' strafes and movements, and the worse frames you have, the worse performance you have basically. I suggest at least 40 frames per second since that is basically the amount I play on all the time and whenever I have less my aim just literally dies. I posted a video and description of ways to get higher Minecraft frames if you are interested. This then leads to having at least a decent setup. This includes having a big mouse pad, because if your mouse pad is small you don't even have space to your mouse and aim at anything. Your computer must also be at least decent to run Minecraft, and not have a broken keyboard or a mouse that disconnects every 3 seconds. Talking about mouse, you should also find the best sensitivity for yourself and then stick to it. I don't suggest searching up the settings and sensitivities for other YouTubers since them being used to their settings doesn't mean you will be. And then finally hotkeys. It is very important because sometimes you have to switch to a specific slot to either pot, apple, or totem. And without hockeys, you literally have to reach like all across the keyboard to even press the number 9. Me personally, I changed the hockeys for number 6 to 9, 2 letters Z, X, C, and V. Anyways, that is pretty much it for the prerequisites. Let's get started with the tutorial. This is the Netherite Pop Kit. It is pretty self-explanatory and you can move around the items in your inventory however you want, but I suggest to always offhand golden apples instead of totems. This makes healing much more efficient, rather than having to switch to golden apples and then switch back to sword, making the sword charge back up if you are offhanding totem. Now let's get started with the gameplay tips. First of all, let's talk about aim. If you already meet the prerequisites I listed at the start of this video, then aim is about two things, practice and mindset. Practice is basically almost all aim is about. You see these cool aim training things on other servers? No, do not do these. They are literally a waste of time. Just keep on practicing. Mindset, however, is what keeps you consistent, since you have to be very focused on your gameplay at all times and not joke. Having both is extremely important in not just Neth Pop but other modes as well. Second, let's talk about timing. People underestimate how important timing is in Netherite Pot. For example, in this clip, this is what happens when your timing is off. You literally cannot do anything to the other player. They will just keep critting you. Even if you have great aim, if your timing is off, it could cost you the entire match. Basically how it works is whenever you are in the air getting knocked up, you have to wait until you are falling down to land a hit, which turns into a crit instead of a hit to deal more damage and then keep it consistent. This is called a punish crit. There are two types of punish crits. One is when you jump, and the other is when you don't jump. It really just depends on the situation which one to do. I suggest practicing and utilizing them both in your Neth Pot fights. And once you get the hang of it doing them very smoothly in any of your fights, maybe in some strafes later on. One mod that can significantly impact your punish crits is the No Hurt mod. This basically removes the shaking of your screen whenever you get hit, which can ruin your punish crits pretty hard. I put the mod in the description if you are interested. Next up we got Golden Apples, and these things are super important. They not only give you two additional hearts and regeneration, it also gives saturation. What saturation does is you basically take a lot less damage due to the natural regeneration. This is why you see a lot of players gapple twice before a fight to get their saturation all the way to max. There is a saturation mod that shows you the amount of saturation you have in your hunter bars that might help. 
I also have posted a video of my Kazi in the description that talks more about this topic. Next up we got a health potting. It's pretty simple. You splash one on the ground and it heals you. But there are a few things to keep in mind. Always splash directly on the ground since if it's a bit far away from you when splashed it won't heal as much. Also potting fest is extremely important. This is because you can get an additional hit or two on your opponent before they finish potting and it can add up from there. Refill speed is also very important which is when your hopper runs out of potions and you have to get more from your inventory. The fastest way to do this is to Click both mouse buttons on your mouse. Next up we got Totem of Undying! It is pretty simple basically when it pops out your potion effects are gone so you have to risk plus strength and speed. I suggest always keeping one in your hotbar just in case so you can quickly hack it to it when you are low or when you are gapping. Next up we got armor repairing with your XP bottles, pretty simple as well, just slash them your armor heals, but there is a way for your armor to take a lot more time to break than your opponent's, all you have to do is whenever your armor is low, take off the pieces that have higher durability and heal the one that has the smallest durability until they are all the same, then just put your armor back on and splash this way whenever your armor breaks, they will all break at once, which will take a lot longer instead of your helmet breaking first and then you do faster. Here are some additional tips that can help you in your Nathpot gameplay. Resource packs can make your gameplay look a lot smoother and make your opponents easier to aim at. It can also boost your frames and even remove the dumb fire effect you get in vanilla Minecraft. There are thousands of cool packs on YouTube, but I put my top 5 favorite nether iPod packs in the description if you want to check them out. Some people ask whether they should combo or crit spam in Nathpot. It is best if you combine both into your gameplay based on the situation. Combos are best when you pull them out unexpectedly, such as pulling out random combos while crit spamming to confuse your opponent or start a combo right after they finish gapping or potting so they are automatically stuck in the combo. Some of these strats might not work against better players, but with enough practice, you will be able to fluently do these without even thinking. You also must keep in mind of your opponent's ping and play style. This is because your knockback is a lot different based on how high yours or your opponent's ping is, and you have to adapt to it quickly. Play style is also very important since some players strafe a lot more than usual. If they are strafe kumbong, there are two ways to get out of the combo. One is just crit them. They are doing regular hits and you can do crits that deal more damage. If you seriously cannot even touch them with your crits, you can trip them off by starting your own combo or strafes, then going for crits when they aren't expecting. Finally, what servers to play on? Some good servers to practice nether iPod is Stray, PvP Legacy, and MC PvP. If you're a beginner, I suggest practicing on Legacy first with worse players, then moving on to Stray with better players. If you just want to practice aim in general, a good server might be Blockcraft. Since it doesn't use the 100% Nathpot kit, it's mainly for aim and pot training. Okay, that might be a lot of information, but don't worry. With enough practice, you will be able to do all these in your Nathpot fights in no time. However, you have to be patient. Every player who has achieved higher tiers such as high tier 3 has practiced 4 months or maybe even years to get to that level. And in the future, as long as you have dedication, consistency, and never give up you might just be one of them. So keep on practicing because one day, who knows you might just become a PvP legend that will go down in history. Anyways that is it for this tutorial, hope you'll learn something and subscribe cause Kanye West say so.